Hey, what is up guys? In this video, I will be sharing with you three ways to increase your productivity so that you can achieve more in life and don't feel as stagnated as some of you may be feeling right now. These are the tips that I've learned and improved throughout my entire two years career here on YouTube, which I've managed to turn it from a side project to a six-figure annual revenue business all by myself without a single employee and without selling a single course or classes just to get it out of the way. So if anything, I hope these tips will be able to give you the spark to turbocharge your productivity. I appreciate it if you can help me smack the like button down below. It helps to get this video to more people. Thank you very much. So without wasting any more of your precious time, let's dive right into it. The first and probably the most unconventional tip is to learn speed reading. Speed reading is the process of quickly recognizing and digesting keywords on a page all at once rather than reading them word by word. Regardless of pandemic or not, the ability to consume more information, be it relevant or irrelevant ones, will greatly support our decision-making process. And this applies to almost any industries out there that require information consumption to a certain extent. I remember back then when I was a junior employee, my colleagues and I had the opportunity to join a veteran investment banker for some due diligence exercise in a physical data room for a last minute project and the sheer amount of documents that we have to flip through is mind blowing, let alone finding key information that may affect the outcome of the project. While my colleague and I finished flipping through only a few sets of documents, the veteran, let's just call him Andrew, had already gone through a humongous mountain of project agreements. So I asked him, Andrew, how you did it so fast? Did you even read them? His answer was super simple and it still stuck with me today. He said, it's all about speed reading and through experience, I know where to find what I want to find. That was a time that I realized that for many things in our life, be it consuming news, social media, articles, we don't have to read all of them word by word because like it or not, the gem or the keywords itself are all that matter and whatever that comes with it probably is just a filler and a waste of time. You can apply speed reading almost everywhere. For me, I like to do it when I'm researching for a certain product or topic or when I am crafting my videos. I need to consume a lot of information in order to connect the dots and compress them into a 10 minute weekly videos that you are watching right now. Many of you ask me during my Instagram AMA, how can I do so many things while working a full time job? This is essentially the secret and just to give you a sense here's a screenshot of the bloomberg front page which is essentially a snapshot of the world economy if you were to go through the articles link by link you will easily spend 10 to 20 minutes reading through all of them but what i like to do instead is to look at keywords and eliminate them if it doesn't ring a bell for example china unhappy virus High chance is a clickbait article that brings not much value, so I will pass. Australia, May polls, probably election, screw it. US bond market, high and alarming. This could relate to the yield curve inversion. Could be somewhat related to recession, so I will click into it. Now, when you're consuming articles like this, there's a few ways to speed read them. Firstly, the summary at the top usually tells you the entire picture of the article. In this case, we are looking for keywords in the article like real yield turning negative and fat and inflation. I also like to jump to the charts or diagrams because paid writers like them usually supplement the key highlights in their article with charts like this and it gives their article more sense of credibility because it helps the reader like us to visualize the data better. Another pro tip here is to quickly scan through or even skip those in quotes because quotes are also meant to increase the credibility of the write-up rather than providing insights because the insights usually come from the writer itself rather than from the quotes. Feel free to play around with these tips and remember, you will only get better over time as this becomes your second nature. Do read up more tips and tricks online on speed reading because hey, I'm also learning to get better day after day. So don't stop perfecting your craft. The second tip of the day is to learn to type faster and there is a good reason behind it. This study from University of Cambridge was done based on 136 million keystrokes from 168,000 volunteers and they concluded 
that the average user in the study typed 52 words per minute, much slower than the professionally trained typists who typically reach 60 to 90 words per minute. The fastest users in our study type 120 words per minute. And in case you're wondering what's my typing speed, this was my first trial on 10fastfingers.com and I managed to pull out 121 words per minute. Usually I would do around 110, sometimes 130 on a good day but I would say 110 would be a more consistent number and if you compare that with the average typing speed of 52 words per minute, I'm at least 2 times faster than the average. Now at first thought, it sounds absolutely stupid to even bother about something so small but let's not forget, by being able to type faster, you are equally able to google search faster, reply to people faster on emails or messages, take notes faster, get your work done faster if your work involves typing and so many more things because like it or not, we live in a digitized world and almost every business or work require typing to a certain extent. So logically, if you are able to extract that extra 15 to 20% of productivity from just typing in your day job, in your research, in your business or whatever, you can easily extract at least a couple of minutes or even hours out of thin air just by purely typing faster. And if you compound that over 365 days in a year, you could be making more important decisions in life which could also lead to more and hopefully better outcome. There are many ways you can improve your typing speed but just to give you a few, firstly, type with the correct posture and position so that 10 of your fingers are able to comfortably cover all of the keys. There are of course ideal finger placement techniques that you can find online but I personally just follow the position that I feel comfortable with and just improve them over time. Tip number two, don't look down at your hands while typing. This sounds counterintuitive but trust me, almost everyone that are able to type above 100 words per minute don't even look at a keyboard while they are typing. It is a thing, it's not a joke because after some time, typing becomes a muscle memory for most of us. Tip number 3, try to reduce lifting off your fingers too much from your keyboard. Just imagine your keyboard as something sticky and your fingers should ideally glide from one key to another without moving your wrist at all. Believe me or not, this is easily a huge time saver when I'm trying to break my own typing speed record. Tip number 4, learn shortcuts and key combinations. For most of us fast typists, we practice a certain key combinations almost subconsciously. For example, using command which is control for windows plus backspace to delete an entire word instead of spamming the backspace button a couple of times. You can also use shortcuts like command plus A to select all, command plus T to open a new browser tab, command plus W to close a tab and command plus numbers to scroll through the tabs without requiring to lift off your fingers to reach your mouse. So just remember this, learning a new shortcut may take you 10 or 15 minutes to get used to but the productivity you're gonna get out of it will last you forever. Again, thanks to muscle memory. The third and last tip I have for you today is to invest in your productivity tools. Trust me on this one, I've spoken to many people that have either burned out from their side jobs or just couldn't maintain the discipline to continue working on it. I am absolutely fortunate to not be one of them, obviously, but I was almost there if I gotta be honest. Though one thing that separates a winner and a quitter is their willingness to reinvest time and resources to master their craft. Let's be real, what's the point of forcing yourself to start a freelance job or a business if you can't even sustain it for the long run? You will get bored and burn out super quickly as soon as you lose steam or when there's no longer motivation to keep you going at full speed. And that is my point here, you need to motivate yourself consciously or subconsciously. Some people buy fancy food or toys or even cars after saving so hard from slogging thousands of hours to each of their own. But that to me is not sustainable because those expenses don't improve your productivity when you are actually doing your work. Obviously, productivity too may differ from person to person depending on the kind of job or industry you are in but generally, if you are sitting in front of a computer a lot like me, I would highly recommend you to seriously consider investing into your workstation. For example, I invested into a 16,000 ringgit MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip which is the main workstation that powers my entire workflow. I'm not saying you should do the same because even the base M1 chip MacBook Air is more than enough for a lot of people. I would also recommend you to invest into a good external display monitor, ultra wide or not. If you have a tight budget, just get a 24 or 27 inch monitor and work your way up from there. They usually cost below 600 ringgit each and can last you at least 5 to 6 years 
at the minimum so you shouldn't have any excuse of not being able to afford it ideally get another external monitor and if your budget allows get an ultra wide monitor and trust me you're gonna turbocharge your productivity to the next level. For a mouse, I would recommend this wireless and rechargeable Logitech MX Master 3 and it pairs well with both Windows and Macs. It has seven customizable keys and many more gestures combinations that you can set up using its Logitech software. I've used this mouse for almost two years already and I've spoken to countless people that are using this mouse concurrently. And no surprise, we all said one thing in common. Once you use this mouse, you can never go back to another mouse anymore. So I've covered computer, monitors, and a mouse. And if you have extra budget headroom to invest, a good chair is definitely a huge plus point to your work ergonomics because every minute that you can sit in front of your computer comfortably is potentially another minute worth of work you're gonna complete. And I won't even begin with the long-term health benefit of sitting in an ergonomic chair for prolonged work sessions. If budget is a constraint, start with something like the IKEA markers. I've owned and used this chair for more than 8 years and I can assure you it is worth its price tag. The very last bit of productivity tool I would recommend you is a mechanical keyboard. And as weird as it sounds, even though I just mentioned about the importance of typing fast, a good mechanical keyboard can only help you so much with your typing. If I were to be honest, you can totally get away with the basic mechanical keyboards if budget is a concern to you. Anything else like custom keycaps or RGB are probably overkill and don't provide as much of functional benefit as it seems. Do you really need a fancy keyboard like this that costs over a thousand ringgit? Not really, I bought it mainly for its aesthetics and of course, it feels good to tap on it, so why not right? If you are interested in more products that I use in my daily workflow, I will put a link down below for you to check them out. Anyways, there are obviously a few more things that will generally help you with your work productivity, such as reducing clutter at your workspace and having a well-lit environment. But all in all, your takeaway from this point is, invest fearlessly into your productivity tools. Don't just look at its price tag, look at the long-term value that a purchase can provide you. One simple thumb rule that I adhere to closely, if I'm going to use something frequently, like on a daily basis, I will just buy it as long as it is within my means. So wrapping up today's video, just remember that we live and learn every day and even when we think we are already good or expert in something, there will always be someone else better than us. Likewise, with the same school of thought, don't beat yourself up just because you have not achieved anything significant in the short run. The author of Atomic Habits, James Clear, once said, 1% 1 better every day will make you 37 times better over 365 days. So celebrate these small wins from time to time and just stay consistent on your path towards the bigger wins. Remember to take action instead of overanalyzing to perfection because crafting the perfect plan will take a long time and there is no guarantee of success. Whereas starting as soon as possible and constant reiteration will ensure progress. So be fearless to make mistakes because the day you stop learning is the day you die. Okay, I hope you found some value from this video. Do subscribe if you want more content like this. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, stay invested and as usual, I will see you in the next one.